أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه وخاتم أنبيائه وسيد رسله سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم وهو أحسن القائلين وأصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فبشر عباد الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسن أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم respected sisters and brothers سلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وتقبل الله أعمالكم وعظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم نهج البلاغة is indeed referred to as one of the greatest gems of knowledge and wisdom that is with humankind today after the Holy Quran it stands as truly unraveled in the world of Arabic literature and indeed it has truly amazed the minds of both Muslims and non-Muslims alike being quoted, for example, within the report of the United Nations. Nahj al is a very critical, important book that you and I perhaps have become more and more attached to throughout the years. It contains 241 sermons, 79 letters, and nearly 500 maxims from the leader of the God conscious, Imam al-Muttaqeen, Wasayyid al-Wasayyin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Many a times in our lives, we have come across certain statements from Nahj al and scholars have highlighted the importance of this particular book, such as, for example, Allama Tabatabai has mentioned that Nahj al is a universe that so many worlds cannot be conquered by human beings. Indeed, they are present in this particular uh, collection of hadith and literature. How is our relationship with Nahjul Balagha, this rich collection of the uloom of Ali Muhammad? Indeed, in the words of Ayatollah al-Mushahid al-Mutahhari, Allah ta'ala alayhi, he gives a parable. He says, you know, sometimes you see someone, you, you know, you've heard of them, you sit, you talk with them, you discuss with them. After a few years, you end up, you know, somehow traveling with them. You get to know them a bit better. You have a new perception. You get closer to them. And so you become more admiring. But then you say, you know what? I wish I got to know this person earlier. I wish I somehow worked hard to develop a relationship earlier. Similarly, when we look at the power of Nahj al when we understand what Nahj al stands for and how can it truly transform our lives, how can it really get us closer to the Holy Quran and to the practice of the faith, we begin to indeed develop an affinity with it. Um, there is no doubt because in the words of many scholars, the words of Nahjul Balagha are that of the below of the creator, but above that of the created normal human beings. And so you find within it so many different gems associated with social sciences, Gnosticism, Irfan, core Islamic principles, um, politics, sociology, spirituality and theology. There are so many dimensions within Nahj al that truly are reflective of the excellence and the status of the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace and blessings be upon him. Now, in reflection of Nahj al indeed we recognize that the book was compiled over a thousand years ago by an esteemed and distinguished scholar known as Sharif al-Radhi or as Sayyid al-Radhi radhi ta'ala alayhi. He was, of course, not only a great scholar, but a poet and a writer who lived only for 47 years. Imagine 
that, you know, it's not a, about how long you live in life. It's about the years that you live, that you've made a amazing difference and you've left a legacy. There are people who have lived only a few years in this world, but are remembered for their excellence and for their contribution. Al Sharif al was born in the year 359 after Hijrah, and he was indeed contemporary to great poets like, for example, Al Mutanabbi and uh, Al Mu'arri. Now, he was a descendant of Imam Al Kadhim, the seventh holy Imam, and he began his Islamic education when he was young in the commentary of uh, Nahjul Balagha by Ibn Abi Al Hadid Al Mu'tazili. It is mentioned that Sheikh Al Mufid, Allah Ta'ala Maqamah, uh, saw a night in his dream a lady who resembled Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. She brought two sons to a masjid known as Masjid al-Karkh in Baghdad. And she looked at this particular um, uh, individual, Sheikh al-Mufid, and said, Ya Sheikh, allimhum al-fiqh, or Sheikh, teach them Islamic knowledge. And, you know, next day, the mother of a Sharif al-Radi does exactly the same thing, comes to this mosque with her two sons, a Sharif al-Radi, Sayyid al-Radi, and a Sayyid al-Murtaba, who's also a phenomenal scholar, fantastic uh, individual who wrote tremendously important works when, when it comes to theology and other Islamic sciences. And he would cry, Sheikh al-Mufid would cry when he somehow immediately remembered the dream and noticed that there is a correlation, there is a uh, somehow connection that cannot be ignored and a special future for these two young children. Now, why was he given the title Al-Sharif Al-Radi? Well, because, you know, he served people. He, he, you know, people, Sharif means, you know, the honorable one, that people were indeed pleased with. Um, you know, he wouldn't hesitate to roll up his sleeves and get there and work out whatever needs to be done uh, to help people. And that is a wonderful example of, you know, humility and the fact that these scholars were so approachable, were so down to earth when it comes to dealing with people, helping people, being right there, solving people's problems. Sharif al Ta'ala Alayhi, he authored actually many works, and one of them is called Khasa'isul um, A'imma. He was, uh, you know, captivated though, and very much inspired by the deep eloquence and the statements of the commander of the faithful, Amir al Mu'mineen, peace and blessings be upon him. And therefore, he was drawn into the illustrious life of Imam Alayhi Salam. Uh, he was asked by, you know, some of his friends to compile a book with important sermons and, you know, statements of Imam Ali Salam, and therefore he began collecting the letters and the statements of the commander of the faithful. Peace and blessings be upon him. But the thing to remember, my dear sisters and brothers, as we shed light into Lahjul Balagha and seek to somehow be inspired, and it's very difficult to talk about Nahjul Balagha and what's in Nahjul Balagha in a few moments. But in summary, you know, one thing that we have to realize is that the Sharif al Radi Ta'ala is a compiler of Nahjul Balagha. He himself admits that only some of the sermons uh, of Imam Ali Salam are actually included in this book. Uh, by all means, not all of them. If you look at, for example, the historian Al Mas'udi in Muruj al Dhahab, he comes forward and says people have memorized 481 sermons of Imam Ali Salam, and amongst them, only uh, half are present in Nahjul Balagh. Yet, of course, these sermons and these maxims have had a deep impact on those who have actually come across them. And we look at an individual by the name of, for example, Al Jahid. Now, Jahid is a celebrated, literally, genius uh, of the third century Hijra. He has written one of the four classical Arabic literature works. Um, and when Jahid, you know, when an, an, a person who is uh, of expertise comes and looks at um, a book like Nahju Balagha, Arabic literature and language is his forte, so to speak. When he speaks such admiration 
for the words of Imam Ali alayhi salam, this shows uh, the value and the real merit of this particular uh, collection of works, as well as, of course, all the statements uh, that are uh, somehow linked to Imam Ali alayhi uh, salam. Jahid comes forward and says, you know, when I look at, for example, one line from Ali, in Nahju Balagha, it's sufficient to tell me that the words of Ali are mesmerizing. He says, when Ali ibn Abi Talib says, that the worth of the human being is what is what is what what is said within their tongue but the way the the, the sentence is constructed makes him um very much admiring and uh, full of awe for nahjul balagha two famous commentaries of nahjul balagha are found one is for example by muhammad abda who is a famous egyptian mufti and ibn abil hadid al mu'tazili who is from the Mu'tazilites. And very interesting, these two famous Ahjul um, Balagha commentaries, perhaps one of the reasons they've become quite famous is that they're written by non-Shias. They're not of the followers of the school of Ahl al-Bayt. Uh, Ibn Abil Hadid spent five years writing a commentary. I mean, he was a, a jurist and a historian. His commentary is over 20 volumes. Um, but what is interesting is that they both dedicated years of their life and their commentaries of Nahjul Balagha. And of course, there are loads of commentaries of Nahjul Balagha. It's not only those two. And Alhamdulillah, we have a, a good collection of them. There is a struggle, however, when it comes to commentaries uh, of the Nahj in non-Arabic, for example, or even, for example, in languages such as English. Because to date, I don't think we have necessarily developed many of these for the benefit of people. And that is why there are organizations, Alhamdulillah, I myself visited the organization in Najaf, which is uh, like an institute completely dedicated to Nahjul Balagha, the study of Nahjul Balagha, lessons to be derived, books, articles, journals, research, all focused on Nahjul Balagha, which of course highlights its, uh, its importance, but we need that more of course, in English, and we need it uh, to be spreading around the Western world so that the non-Muslims also benefit, so that they can also be uh, illuminated and inspired by the words of the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. And of course, on an eve like this, we recall those difficult moments that Imam Amir al muminin peace and blessings be upon him, had to go through before going to the mosque, before praying, before being fatally struck. He was in the house of Umm Kulthum, radwanullahi ta'ala alayha, one of the daughters of Imam alayhi salam, according to some narrations. And when it was time to break his fast, she brought forward some bread, some milk, and some salt and Imam alayhi salam refused to uh, have all three and actually broke his fast and whatever he had was bread and some salt and he said I would like to meet my lord in this state Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen was getting ready that night was a difficult night it was a night to worship Allah and remember the almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and Umm Kulthum indeed would see him in this state and would say to him, what has happened? And he would say to her that I saw in my dream my brother Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasallam, telling me, you are coming towards us very soon. We are anticipating your arrival. When he would leave the house, part of his cloth would be attached to the door. It, as, it is as if his clothes would not want him to go to Masjid al-Kufa. The birds were loud, somehow telling him, Ya Ali, don't go to Masjid al-Kufa. Yet he went. And when he was about to reach there, he saw people asleep. He would wake them up for Salatul Fajr. And including the enemy of God, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, who was sleeping on his stomach with the poison sword under it. And he was trying, Imam was trying to wake him up and then said to him, what calamity and crime you are about to commit. 
So when the Imam alayhi salam entered the mosque, when he was about to perform the prayers, as many narrations tell us that it was nafila prayers that he was praying, performing, when the la'een, that wretched individual, came behind him whilst the Imam alayhi salam was in his sajda, and this man struck him on his head. Now this strike of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim on the head of Amir al muminin is a strike that shook the heavens. Jibra'il called out, Tahaddamat wallah arkanul huda. The foundations of guidance have been demolished. Qutila Amir al muminin Amir al muminin has just been killed. That moment that the malaika would weep, that moment that the, all the prophets would cry, and Amir al muminin cried out, Fustu wa Rabbul Ka'bah. I have attained victory by the Lord of the Kaaba. A strike on the head of Amir al muminin was a strike that every single member of the Ahl al-Bayt felt the pain of, including his son Aba Abdullah al Hussein on the plains of Karbala. Ya Hussein, your father's head was struck once and it was split. But I ask you, how many times was your head struck? Was it with the arrow? Or was it with the stone? Or was it with the dagger of shimr? Allah la'natullahi ala al-qawm al-zalimin wa sayya'lamu al-lazheena zalamu ayyamun qalabin yanqalibun wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen wa inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un.